Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Tanan and today's video is a bit of a different one because we are focusing on Kiwi who is my dog. She is booked in for a spay operation tomorrow morning and I thought I would film our experience with Kiwi because I haven't really seen any of these types of videos around. I was really wanting to watch some vlogs about this sort of thing from other people but unfortunately there just wasn't a lot out there. So I decided I would create my own video. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. It will show the highs, the lows, hopefully we don't have too many of those. But essentially it will be a real life look at this procedure, the process itself, and Kiwi's recovery. There are two ways that you can neuter your dog. So Kiwi is a female, just in case anyone didn't know. And you can either have a keyhole surgery, which is a less invasive surgery that only removes, I think, the uterus. And then you have a bigger surgery, which I am no way going to pronounce this right, so I will pop it up on screen for you, where they have to make a bigger incision and essentially take all the reproductive organs out. So unfortunately, Kiwi is getting the latter one, which is the big operation, and I'm not gonna lie, I am absolutely terrified. You guys know that she is my baby, I want to look after her, I don't want anything bad to happen to her at all, and so agreeing to having her neutered was honestly absolutely awful and I feel like I'm kind of stabbing her in the back because she's gonna have no idea what's happening to her there's no way for me to communicate with her and tell her this is what's happening this is why you will be okay and I think that's the worst part of this for me that she has so much trust in Tom and I and then when we take her to the vets I know she's gonna just walk in as she normally does all happy and smiley and then we're just gonna have to leave her there and she's gonna have to go in for the biggest stop of her life possibly so <laughs> yeah, I feel absolutely horrible. I feel like the worst human being in the world right now and I am an anxious wreck. So as I mentioned, the surgery is tomorrow. We're taking her in at nine o'clock. She isn't allowed any food tonight past nine o'clock, which she doesn't really eat that much during the day anyway. So we're gonna give her some wet food at around six or seven just to make sure that she does eat and that she will be okay. And then we're gonna take her for a walk tomorrow morning before the surgery in order for her to do her business and be a little bit tired tired out so she will have had her walk for the day because she will not want to move after we bring her home. I don't want her to move after we bring her home. I have no idea what the recovery is going to look like for her so I just want to make everything as comfortable as possible for her and I'm going to be staying with her 24-7. And then just because I didn't mention this earlier, Kiwi is a cross between a Springer Spaniel and a Labrador. She is one year and eight months. She is female as I mentioned and when we last took her to the vets, which wasn't that long ago actually, she weighed 20 kilos. So so that's the basic information for her. I will of course let you guys know the cost of this operation once I do pay it. It is all dependent on how much your dog weighs and then if they need to give them more anaesthetic during the op and things like that then obviously the cost is billed. But Tom and I are members of, is it called Pet Plan? I'm pretty sure it's called Pet Plan. It's a scheme that the vets offer and essentially you pay monthly but then you get certain benefits so we will get 20% off the cost of a bitch spay which is going to be great for us essentially because we can save quite a bit of money so yeah I'll talk you through the prices and all that once the op is over and once I actually have <laughs> a clue of what's going on but yeah I don't think I have too much more to say now actually I will try and film as much as possible tomorrow for you guys of Kiwi before during and after the procedure and then I'm not sure what I'm gonna do afterwards I may show you a clip each day I may skip a few I don't know but the recovery should take between 10 and 14 days so we'll see but for now I am gonna end this clip here here. I am going to spend as much time as I can with Kiwi now and I apologize in advance for the mess that I will be tomorrow because if I'm feeling ill now, once Kiwi goes into the vets, I'm going to feel even worse. So <laughs> apologies in advance and I hope that you guys do get something out of this video. Hi Kiwi. Hi, go on. <laughs>
We've just dropped Kiwi off at the vets and honestly, I want to cry again. <laughs> that was the most horrible thing ever, walking away from her and just seeing her little face look at us so confused was just heartbreaking. And if you see the tears start to come, then yeah, please just ignore it. But we dropped her off at the vets and straight away we were kind of scared because we realised that her last heat was in March, which is now five months ago. So for those of you that don't know, dogs typically go on heat every six months. So obviously we're getting into the later half of that now and the veterinary nurse was quite concerned so he went to speak to the vet the vet said that she was more than happy to do the surgery it would just be a little bit more high risk and we did decide to do it because the vet said that she had done stuff like this before obviously um, it's not a significantly higher amount of risk but it is obviously a bit of a trickier job because they explained to me that what happens is that tissue starts to build once the dogs start to come into the next heat cycle which can make things swell, it can make things harder to navigate when they're doing the operation. So yeah that was a bit scary but ultimately we decided to go through with it because the vet said she was confident and then of course tom and i are off for the next two weeks so we can properly look after her and we didn't want to have to push it back and wait another few months to then not be able to actually spend time with her and care for her so yeah we decided to go for it and i'm i'm actually uh, i'm second guessing my decision because i feel so bad i genuinely feel horrible like the worst person ever right now so yeah it's just oof, a big thing but she went in there she had all the tests done she is healthy there's nothing wrong with her in that sense which is obviously good news for a dog that's going into surgery and we were reassured that you know if they open her up and things don't look good then obviously they won't go ahead with it so it should be okay i am just absolutely terrified i've cried the whole way home because <laughs> i've just felt so guilty so bad i feel so stressed and i'm just terrified that if something does go wrong that i won't be able to do anything i won't be able to be there for her and she will just be really confused and sad and distressed and yeah i literally feel like the worst person ever right now <laughs> but she's in i'm not sure when they were actually going to do the surgery on her they said it's basically an all-day thing where they do the op in the morning which will i think be right about now actually we took her in at nine and it's now 10 past 10 so i have taken a bit of time to kind of compose myself i was a bit of a mess uh so i had just had to yeah as i mentioned just kind of get over it a bit calm down i've been sat outside which is why i'm still in my coat because i needed that fresh air but yeah they're gonna do the surgery this morning they're gonna monitor her for a couple of hours and then once she seems to be getting a bit better they will phone us and essentially set up a recovery appointment where we can go and pick her up today so yeah that's if everything goes according to plan which i'm really hoping it does i don't know how i'll be able to deal with the stress of it all today because I'm just a nervous wreck right now. I can't focus on anything. I don't want to do anything. I just keep thinking about her and I just keep getting upset. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of today. I hate waiting around, but I know that I have to and there's nothing I can do. So yeah, it's a horrible feeling to anyone else that's going through this right now. I completely feel for you because I never want to be in this position again. <laughs> it's genuinely the worst I've ever felt, I think, because... As I mentioned, I just feel so guilty and I can't talk to her, you know? If I could just talk to Q and tell her that we're doing this for her, that in the long term it's better for her, then maybe it would be okay. But because she has no idea what's going on and because she looked so scared at the vets, oh, I just feel like the worst person and the tears are coming now. So. Yeah, it's just a horrible feeling and I'm going to be glued to my phone today because they're going to phone me once they're done, once they can update me. So I need to keep an eye on, on that and essentially not stray too far so that if they do phone me or when they phone me, I can go there pretty quickly because the vets isn't too far from me. It's about 10 minutes, maybe even less. So yeah, I just want to be ready to go when I can. So I genuinely have no idea what I'm going to do today. I think I'm just going to go lie in bed because I feel that sorry for myself 
gonna go lie in bed, possibly watch something to kind of take my mind off what's actually going on and hopefully that works out and I can not forget about it because I am gonna be so stressed all day but hopefully I can kind of pass the time that way and yeah it'll be quicker for me then to see QE again so yeah I wanted to film this little clip now because it shows how I'm feeling straight after dropping her off at the vets it shows kind of what we've gone through and yeah it wasn't the best when you obviously hear that there's a bigger risk involved and things like that it's definitely scary and I feel horrible that I've signed off on it because if anything does go wrong I feel like that is definitely just going to be all on me and yeah it's just oh it's just a horrible horrible thing to go through I just wanted to film this so that any of you guys that are going through it right now can kind of relate because our dogs are our babies I feel like people who don't have dogs really don't get it Kiwi is literally my life she is the best thing in my life aside from Tom of course but we've both said she is literally the most important thing in our lives she's the best thing in our lives and doing this to her just feels so awful so hopefully some of you can relate it will be fine I know it will be fine but oh it's just that horrible thing isn't it where they have to go through all the risks and things like that and then I just get panicked so yeah that's where we're up to Kiwi should be in for her surgery now and I guess I'll update you guys once we've heard something or once we pick her up the vet has just phoned me and Kiwi is apparently doing fantastic. The surgery went well and she is just recovering now so they're keeping an eye on her. We get to pick her up at quarter to three which is fantastic. It's only about an hour away now so I'm so so happy and she's going to be coming home to a nice clean house. I took advantage of the time we had to hoover and clean the house because Kiwi doesn't actually like the hoover so yeah, I didn't want to add stress to her at all this week, so I've decided to do my cleaning today, so I've gotten it out of the way. And yeah, it looks a lot nicer and we won't have to stress her out even more. But I'll show you what we've got going on for her as soon as she gets in. So we have had her cage in here recently because we went away. We didn't want her in the conservatory. We wanted her to be a bit more comfortable with the carpet and things like that. So that's why the cage is in the middle of our lounge. Our suitcases are there just to make sure that she doesn't jump over, but she hasn't done. So yeah, we probably could take those away now, but just just in case that's why those are there and then we bought this bed for her yesterday we went to pets at home I think it was 40 pounds but it's a big flat bed it's gonna be perfect for her to lie down on the cage is quite small and so yeah we wanted her just to be able to lie down on something because she does like to jump on our sofas and obviously she's not allowed to jump on anything so this is here for her now and then I did buy her some toys which I don't think she's gonna want to play with I think she's going to be knackered bless her but we've got this little rope toy it's really cute we've got this little plush one as well and then I've got her a ball as well so yeah these are her toys I do have a lot more because I went overboard I felt so bad but I think just for the way she's going to be the softer toys will be better for her and yeah it's not going to be too much so we can gradually give her another toy once she gets a little bit better things like that so yeah that's her little setup I cannot wait for her to get home. I just, oh, I just feel so bad for her, bless her, because it's a lovely day as well, and normally we would be going on a nice walk right now, but yeah, it's, oh, it's so sad. So, yeah, she's fine, she's doing good. Everything's set up for her, and I'm just so, so happy. Like, the stress of this morning was unbearable. Tom and I were literally crying every five minutes because we just yeah we felt so bad we were nervous but i'm so so happy it's so relieved and yeah i can't wait to go and pick her up hiya kiwi oh hello hello oh wow she's doing a lot better than i thought she would <laughs> look who's home you guys it's kiwi <laughs> She is definitely a bit drowsy from the anaesthetic and yep, she did jump straight on the sofa, which she's not meant to do. We have the nice bed right here, but she loves the sofa. I've checked, everything's fine. So as long as she doesn't move now, she can stay there for a bit, but then I think we are gonna have to maybe move the cage and block the sofa so that she doesn't, you know, move around too much. But this is the scar. So you can see here, it's not as big as I thought it was gonna be actually, which is really good. And yeah, they've had to shave her belly, obviously. The 
Ivy goes in there and yeah we get to take that off in a minute she's been eating it seems she's had some treats as well and if I can just show you her face again <laughs> there she is so yeah she's gonna have a nap now I think she's very very tired and I'll check in with you guys a bit later it is day one of recovery for Kiwi today and we are just about to go on a walk actually. So the vet has told us that every day we need to take her on a little walk just to make sure that she's getting her exercise in and for her not to be too wild indoors because obviously if they're at home all day they just want to play and that's not good. So we're about to take her on a little walk, nothing crazy. Obviously this is a first post-op day so we don't want to do anything that can make her worse or anything like that. I've put a coat on but I think I'll take it off because it's actually quite warm and sunny as well. I'm just looking. I don't know if I need my sunglasses. Probably not. But Kiwi is doing so good. She's definitely not herself still. She is still very sleepy. She's of course finding it hard to move around but she has gone to the toilet. She has only had a pee though. She hasn't done a number two yet so we're gonna look out for that. But yeah she has been eating as well. We've put her medicine in her food and that's gone down for today so we're doing good. <laughs> in terms of but last night we set up the cage around the living room which I will show you guys how we did it tonight that's how it's going to be now for the rest of this post-op recovery for her I'm not going to really change anything it worked really well I slept on the floor with her as well but we essentially put the cage just in front of the sofas so she couldn't really jump on them and we put a little onesie on her as well so that is essentially to stop her from licking the wound she hasn't been from what we've been seeing but because I am obviously sleeping at night we did buy a medical onesie just off of Amazon. I will pop a picture of it up on screen now for you guys and I will leave a link down below if any of you are interested. But yeah we did buy that. The vets also did suggest it because it's a great kind of replacement for a cone. Obviously Kiwi doesn't need a cone but just for peace of mind at night it's very handy and it fits her well. It's comfortable and she doesn't mind it at all. So we have to put that on at night and yeah we slept through the night which is good. She did move around quite a bit but other than that again she was fine with it and Hopefully that stays the same, but I'm just walking through the house because I'm gonna show you where she is. Tom's currently watching Mad Max. He might put it off now or put it on mute, Tom. <laughs> just because I don't think you want to hear that but this is where we are right now so as you can see I've moved the cage back to here but Kiwi is I won't say she's raring to go but she did get excited when I asked her if she wanted to go for a walk so yeah we're gonna take her for a short one now. Hopefully it does some good for her. Hopefully she can just have a bit of fresh air, get out the house for a bit, move around, and yeah, hopefully it will just be a nice little thing for her, though she does look very, very sleepy still, bless her. So yeah, we're gonna go now. I don't wanna keep her any longer, and I will, of course, take you with us. Hey. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> right, we're back. She did really good, as you saw. She still wants to get up. <laughs> no, she <laughs> is there. Is it dumb? Yeah, she did really good. She had a wee, which you may have seen. I don't know if I will have kept it in. And then, oh, kiwi. <laughs> And she did have a poo, which I didn't obviously include, but yeah, she's doing a lot better. She is definitely not meant to be jumping up on the sofa, but she has been okay so far. So we're just keeping an eye on her. We're trying to keep her on this as much as possible, but as you can see, it's a bit difficult sometimes. But yeah, successful first post-op walk and hopefully she will just get better and better as the days go on but yeah see she's lying down now she's a bit pooped she came straight in and drank a load of water which is not like her at all normally she has a little tiny bit if that so yeah she definitely needed it we just went for a short walk as i mentioned and yeah we'll see how she goes but hopefully that will kind of tire her out for a bit hopefully she will sleep now and we'll see how she is later on but yeah it was a good walk and she enjoyed it Good morning everyone. It is day two of Kiwi's recovery and I wanted to start this off here to kind of show you the setup that we have downstairs for her at night. So you can see she is walking about this morning. I think she is definitely getting back to her old self. It feels like that anyway because she is being quite demanding again now. <laughs> 
So that's when you know. All jokes aside though, she is doing really well. I have already taken the onesie off of her just because I don't want to have it on her when we don't need to. So that is why she doesn't have it on now, but she has had it on throughout the night. We just like I mentioned, don't want her to be stuck in it, especially when we are awake and we're here to watch her. So yeah, that's the whole deal with that. But she desperately wants to get out of here now. I have tried to take her out for a wee this morning, but she didn't go. So we're gonna try again in a minute, aren't we? But yeah, she's just walking around at the minute, not quite sure what to do with herself. And I'm gonna let her out as soon as we can. So, <laughs> hey. Look over there. Oh, I love her so, so much. I'm so happy she's getting back to her old self, bless her. But yeah, she definitely still wants a lot of attention and a lot of cuddles, but I definitely don't mind. Right, so as you can see, I have been sleeping down here. This is a little kind of put me up mattress that we had. We have two of them. So I've stacked one on top of the other because I slept on one the first morning and my back was in bits. So we bought the second one down. I have now been sleeping on two of them and it's so much comfier and I feel so much better this morning. Oh, look at her, she's lying down. We have Kiwi's cage over there as you can see and her new nice bed. She actually lay on this throughout the majority of the night from what I can remember because I do wake up at night just to kind of check on her a little bit so that was really good she did also come on this one to have a cuddle with me last night and this morning which i'm definitely not mad about it's so cute when she does that and yeah as i mentioned definitely getting back to her old self what we've then done let me just pick you up is opened up her pen so normally this would be kind of a circle and it would attach to her cage but what we've done we've opened it and as you can see it comes all the way around here and it boxes us in here as well so kiwi cannot get out she cannot jump on the sofas in the middle of the night so we are essentially locked in here but you know what it's fine that's the only way we could have done it and of course it does work really well so i'm gonna fold this back in a minute i normally just fold all of this up and put it kind of against that sofa again so she doesn't jump up on there but she is quite good she does tend to kind of crawl onto the sofa when she does manage to get on there which has been a few times as you saw yesterday when we got back from our walk she is very sneaky like that so there you have it that is our setup please ignore the state of me <laughs> i did just wake up about 10 minutes ago so yeah we're not looking the best this morning but before i pack this all away i did want to show you guys how we have kind of dealt with this i know we're lucky to have this space i know we're lucky to have this pen this catch it would definitely have been a lot more difficult if we didn't have the catch because it is is so handy and of course my mattresses as well but essentially use what you've got you know you've got to be creative with it as long as you stop them jumping up on the sofa who cares how it looks you just need to make sure that your dog's not jumping up in the middle of the night and that you can kind of keep an eye on them so whether that's putting them in the cage taking the cage upstairs with you sleeping on the floor like I'm doing it's just whatever works so this is what we've come up with it's great because she has room to walk around and obviously I get to be in here with her I would hate for her to feel separate separated from us so yeah it's worked out really well and she's been really really good actually at putting the onesie on at night and coming in here to sleep so yeah I am just gonna double check her wound now make sure it looks okay make sure nothing is off with it essentially we like to do that a few times a day just to obviously make sure that nothing's wrong but all I'm gonna do is literally when she lies down, I'm just gonna look at her belly. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna do anything that could hurt her. I'm literally just gonna look at it. We are going to the vets again tomorrow. I think it was about half 11 in the morning. So yeah, hopefully it's all good. Hopefully she can have more medicine because that's another thing that I haven't mentioned actually. She does have to take medicine. It is a liquid medicine. So we have a little syringe for her. And what we've done is we've actually put it in her wet food. So she doesn't have wet food all that often. It's a kind of treat for her and so we're kind of playing like a bribery game here where she gets some of her wet food with her biscuits and what we've done is obviously put the medicine into that wet food we've mixed it about and she has been eating it which is brilliant so at least we know she's getting a medicine it's probably better to do it straight from the syringe into her mouth just to make sure that she's got it but again we don't want to stress her out we don't want her not to trust us so we've decided to put it in the food hopefully that's okay again i'll ask the vet tomorrow but she seems fine she doesn't seem like she's in a lot of pain i know she's in some pain because how could you not be after that up she seems fine we're doing good hopefully the vet says 
that things are going well as well because we've never done this before. We are just going off of what we feel like we're doing right, I suppose. <laughs> but you can see she's quite active this morning and every time she does this, I get really scared that she's going to, you know, move about too much and open up the wound but she seems to be doing fine so I'm just leaving her to do what she does and I'm just keeping an eye on her essentially so yeah that's the morning of day two I don't know how long or how often I will update you for because I feel like this vlog would be extremely long otherwise and quite boring so I might just put in a few clips after tomorrow of how she's doing every day so like if she is starting to run I will film a clip and put it in just so this vlog as I mentioned isn't too long and boring but I still want to document how she was in her recovery so I think that's what I might do because I feel like this vlog is quite long already I have been giving you a lot of updates and chatting to you for a while like I've been chatting for nine minutes now which how have I been doing that but yeah I think that's what I'll do after tomorrow, of course, I will take you to the vets with us again. I won't film in there, I don't think, but I will tell you guys what was said. And from then on, I don't think I'll be talking as much, which you will probably be grateful for. But yeah, that is my plan. I'm gonna end this clip here so that I can move this cage, move this bedding and stuff like that and take Kiwi out to make sure that she does go for a wee. Although she does seem quite happy here at the minute. She is chewing away on her paw. <laughs> even though she's got so many toys around her. I don't know when I'll update you guys today. Maybe when we go on our walk again, I'm not sure. But for now, I'm gonna leave you here and I will chat to you guys as soon as I have something else to say. Right guys, we are off to take Kiwi to the vet. This is gonna be her first post-op checkup. Honestly, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. She's been doing fine. The only problem that we've had with her is that she's jumping on the sofa, but other than that, She's been doing so well, her stitches look fine. So I'm hoping that we're all good. I feel like she's gonna be terrified walking back in there though after her last trip, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I reckon she'll be fine. Where is she actually? Is she ready? Oh, so this is where she is. <laughs> she is laying down on the bed. Can you tell that something's going on? I think you can, but look how cute she is. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need to go now because it's 20 past, our appointment's at half past 11, and I guess I'll update you guys once we're back home. Hi guys, so it's a little bit later now, but we are obviously back from the vets. And I'm so happy to say that Kiwi is healing up really nicely and she's doing really good herself as well. So her incision is how it should be. It's how it's meant to look after the first kind of three, four days, which is fantastic. And then they also looked at her teeth and heart rate and took her temperature as well. So all in all, she's doing great, which is such amazing news. I feel like as a dog owner, I often wonder like, am I actually doing things right? But it's really nice to have them say that we are. So yeah, she's doing fantastic. Again, we don't need a cone because she's not bothered with the wound. And yeah, we're just gonna keep the medical suit on her at night as we've been doing anyway. I did feel so bad for her though, because as soon as we got into the vets and the waiting rooms, she started shaking uncontrollably and you could tell she was really distressed and nervous and oh, Oh my goodness, my heart just broke for her. She obviously knew that that's where we left her before. And obviously the last time we'd gone there, we did leave her and she had her op. So I bet it was just absolutely terrifying for her to be back and yeah, it made me cry again. <laughs> Celeste, that she was just having a moment. And then as soon as we got into the room with the vet as well, she hid under Tom's chair and did not want to come out. But after coaxing her for a few minutes, she did and she was fine. And then as soon as we got into the car, she was so, so happy. I don't know if I took a clip of that, but if not, I will pop a photo up on screen of her of how happy she was. And again, that just melted my heart because she must have been so scared. And then to walk out of there relatively quickly was probably amazing for her. So yeah, bless her. I feel so bad for putting her through all of this. And again, the fact that I can't communicate to her what's going on is the worst thing. I just wish I could tell her why we're doing this and that it's gonna be better for her in the long run. But she is definitely getting back to her old self now. She's got so much energy again. She wants to play, which is fantastic. And it's just made me so happy. I'm so relieved. The fact that she's healing now and that she's getting back to her old self is just more than I could ever ask for because those first few days were tough. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just wanted to cry the whole time but seeing her get better now and seeing her wanting to play wanting to move wanting to go for a walk it's just oh it's just 
fantastic and I'm so so happy for her that she is starting to get better. I am still sleeping downstairs with her just an FYI because that's the safer option and I know that I can do it and yeah for her and for me it just makes sense so I'm sticking with that. I'm probably gonna stick with that until my next vet visit with her which is next Monday. So that will be her 10 day post-op checkup I think and yeah hopefully after that she'll be good when the all clear and we can go back to normal but until then I'm still gonna be cautious I'm still gonna take care of her because she is my baby at the end of the day and I don't want anything to go wrong I did mention previously that I was gonna include a few more clips here and there but honestly I think I'm just gonna update you guys once we do go to the vets for what will hopefully be the last time otherwise it's just gonna be a really long vlog that is quite boring so I think after this update we will take the next couple of days off just see how QB is in general and then I will give you guys a final update at the 10 day mark where she will hopefully be a lot better and will be given the all clear as well so I hope that's okay with you guys it'll just be little improvements each and every day I think anyway it won't be anything too major if anything you've seen the major parts at the start and how we've kind of dealt with it and looked after Q so hopefully that is fine with you guys but yeah I did want to give you this update make sure you knew that everything was okay that Q is okay and that we're just looking forward now to next week when hopefully we can all get back to normal again so yeah I'm gonna end this clip here and I guess I will chat to you guys in a few days time right guys you'll be happy to know that I am here to close out this vlog I'm not gonna lie to you it's a few weeks later now after Kiwi had her op I don't know why I didn't update you guys sooner to be honest with you I think it was just the fact that we were getting so close to starting school again as Tom and I are both teachers and that time just ran away with me so really sorry about that I will insert a clip of Kiwi going for her 10 day post-op checkup though it's only a little one I didn't want to really film too much but as you can see she is quite comfortable there though she was definitely scared to start with bless her but since then we've also been back for some injections for her and I think the more we go the more she will be okay with it again obviously us leaving her there and her having the biggest stop of her life was definitely going to traumatize her so we're just trying to get her accustomed to going back to the vets now and hopefully over time she will be okay doing so in terms of how she was healing though everything was perfectly fine I did have a few concerns about her scar but the vet checked over and said that is completely normal because she's had kind of dissolvable stitches this time around there would be some sort of swelling on the inside maybe they're just irritating a little bit as they're dissolving so that was no problem at all and by now she is definitely back to her old self which is so amazing to see so I do just want to take a minute to thank you guys for coming with me on this journey I know now that it's been a few weeks since it actually happened but as you can tell from the footage that was the worst time of my life it was completely horrible I felt so helpless and yeah I'm just so happy to say that everything went well Kiwi is happy and healthy and I really hope that this video did help you out in one way or another I am gonna end this one here though because I know that this video is a long one it's a lot longer than I intended for it to be so thank you if you stuck with me and you're still here if you have made it this far into the video please comment a dog emoji down below that could either be the actual dog emoji or a bone or something like that just to let me know that you're here it honestly blows me away that you guys want to watch these videos all the way through especially ones like this that are a little bit more niche so if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say but you would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and comment that now as well as that please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me but that is it for me today guys thank you so so much for watching it truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video goodbye